It's time once again for another edition of the Techno Wizard Show. We had so much fun burning bismuth from last time that I figure let's melt some more. That's right, I have another little ignit of bismuth. It's just the same. We have a wonderful sunny day, so let's get cracking and let me show you a little more about the lens up. This is what they call the Fresnel lens here. This came off of an old rear projection television screen. You can see all the nuts and bolts went in there from its frame. And uh, it's about two feet by about three feet. Uh, hello! Don't know if that worked, but yeah. This is what I used to melt it. Fresnel is spelled F-E-R-S-N-E-L. The S is silent. There's lots of other videos out there about people also use this to melt metal. Or if they have the focus set a little bit loosely, but you can actually cook on this if you put it on some bricks. So, let's go ahead and get melting with our purpose for it here as a furnace. 2,000 degrees at least, I betcha. All right then. Here we go. Okay, here's our setup again. With our lens on the ground, so it's out of focus, and therefore safe. You do gotta be careful with those things. Once that lens gets focused, it can set things on fire pretty quick. So I you know have some water handy. I have the garden hose up back here. Here is our bismuth. And I have it angled so that it should all pull up nicely right down there into one little collection. There's the new ignit. And you can see that, yes, I was able to scratch with my fingernail um, those little lines you see from our previous experiment. But there it is. Those beautiful colors and iridescent uh, formations are gonna get reshaped and remolten. All right, let's commence the melting. Okay, welding goggles down. We're ready to begin. <laughs> Look at how quickly the smaller pieces move. Gotcha. See that just kind of slips away into a puddle. But as you see, the smaller the mass, the uh, more rapidly the heat is exchanged between it. Beautiful fires. And it's the hotter it uh, heats up and the faster it goes down. That's why this larger one here is uh, it's kind of melting from the top down.
We're not far on the side. Can we make a ring around? Probably try casting a ring and stuff. Eventually. Yeah, check that out. So, we have more melted business. As it cools on down. Let's zoom in for a closer peek. Nice little fan shape there. We are. All right. Well, let's let this thing cool down and take it on in for a closer examination. Okay. It's had a chance to cool down now. And yeah, this is a really nice piece of, once again, yes, it is in one piece of lovely coalesced metal. Let's have a nice close look at the lovely colors here. Mm, it's nice and shiny. And here we see you get extra heat focus. But this little branch, ooh, ain't that pretty. All the way up to the end. Then back down. You can see where, as I was moving it around, one little thread uh, ran down this way, the other thread ran down on top of it. Ooh, lovely color right there, nice red. The reason it, uh, changes colors like this is because it interacts with the oxygen and other elements in the atmosphere as it heats and cools. Yep, that's where it was up along the lip, along the ridge. Boy, oh, that a nice pretty leaf there, yeah. Really like how this came out. This was the center of the newer piece that flowed out on there. Lovely gold in there. More blues. Deep purples and whatnot here. And take a look at that, huh? Wow. Of course I can't just leave this in one hole. Because, oh my, it's quite thin. <laughs> Paper thin little wafer here. That came out. Put on the plate for later. A little bit of dust. So yeah, of course, what's the other side look like? Again, nice and almost mirror smooth. Very nice here. You can really see quite clearly where each little ripple overlapped, ran down cooled and then the other ripple of uh, melted metal flew right over it. That's where it hugged the edge of the plate. Let me see more overlaps there. Quite the collection of little pieces over here. You can see with the uh, newer piece here as it melted down and but as it went back and forth over it with the heat of the sun. Yeah, this piece here I might have to break off separate. That's special because look at how lovely those colors are. Yeah. There is one other thing I want to show you. That's what this looks like with a black light on it. Okay, here's a little bit of a darker corner. Black light. Wow, those are some crazy colors there, isn't it? Purple reflects off purple. This is this effect is much more pronounced in the camera than it is with me just looking at it. 
But check it out, man. It's like an alien landscape. Wow. It's a great half moon. Other side. Ready for shiny. Very reflective air on the surface. Check it out, man. And then to really get a better idea of the uh, iridescent colors of it, whoa, talk about being mirror bright. See how the little, uh, the angle right there reflects right back at you. It's a little circles of sunlight there that we all know and love. Very smooth, very nice. All right, and we'll do a regular um, flashlight as well to really catch the colors. It's white LED light here. Boy, that's bright. Uh, Ooh, isn't that shiny? Very shiny. Here we go. It's just the reflected colors of the light here. And... Alright, I hope you've once again enjoyed Bismuth melting it and checking out its cool colors and I'll go ahead and uh, take some of the better pieces off here right about there looks like a good piece yeah that's a nice one there and I'll, uh, I'm probably gonna melt it yet again and finally get around to showing you what this does when you and, and, and it interacts with magnets. Tune in next time for another Technoizard show.